In the previous video, I introduced you guys to all the hardware for the Hamsville dial and everything that went into the physical design of the dial. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through the software and all its features. The companion app serves three main purposes. The first is managing the connection between the dial and the computer and also providing an alternate way for the dial to control the PC other than through traditional HID commands. Secondly, it keeps track of the application you are actively working with and then relays that information to the dial so the dial knows to switch its configuration to match the active application. The third purpose of the app is to provide users with a friendly interface where all the dial's functions can be configured without needing to write any code, not unless you really, really want to. We are going to first take a look at how the code for the dial is structured in a way that allows it to be easily managed by the software. The first thing I did was to create a template for all the configurations required by all the physical controls on the dial. This template is essentially a structured data containing all the possible commands you want to use with the dial. I then created an array whose elements are different variations of the structured data. So every configuration file that is created in the app is indexed in this array. And this is how the dial holds multiple configurations for different applications. One of the information stored in the structured data is the name of the configuration, which is also the name of the specific application that the configuration was created for. So for example, if I create a configuration for SOLIDWORKS, the configuration file name will also be SOLIDWORKS. So, the software locates the specific folder containing these different configuration files, which by the way are also .ino files and are all parts of the same Arduino sketch. One of the cool features of the Arduino IDE is it allows you to break a sketch into multiple files that show up as tabs when you open up the sketch. Once the software locates the config files, it reads the name and also the index of the configuration. So when you switch to an application on your computer that bears the same name, the index is sent to the dial via serial communication. So the dial knows to load the configuration at that index from the array of configurations it has stored on it. This configuration indexing is the basis of a lot of the communication between the dial and the software. Now let's take a look at the HAP itself. The HAP was developed in c -sharp as a WPF.NET Framework application. It's not the prettiest application out there and it looks quite simple and unassuming, but that's mostly because all the essential operations are performed automatically in the background. So you really need to interact with this interface. And I also kind of suck at UI design, so. In the top section, you have the connection controls and buttons. These combo boxes will tell you if the dial is connected directly via the Type-C port or if it's connected wirelessly via the wireless adapter. The button can be used to manually connect and disconnect the dial when you need to. And there's also a little information box here that tells you the current status of the dial's connection. Right now, I have the absolute variant connected through the wireless adapter. All connections are automatic too. So if I disconnect the wireless adapter, the HAP also disconnects. And if I plug it back in, it will query the adapter and automatically reconnect to it. In the bottom half, you have the application switching section. This section shows the information about the active application on your computer and it also shows the index of the associated configuration file. By default, it's always set to auto and that enables the auto app switching feature for the dial. But you can also switch to manual mode where you can tell the dial which configuration to use by either entering the index of the configuration or by entering its name. So you notice the LED pattern on the dial changes as I enter different application names. That's because the dial has been configured with different LED patterns 
to identify the different application configurations I currently have on it. The same thing will happen if I switch back to auto mode and move from hub to hub. Since all operations are carried out automatically, the app is programmed to run unobtrusively in the background, so you can close it and it will just continue to operate in the background without needing any user intervention. Where you spend most of your time is on the configuration page. This is the interface that allows you to manage and create different configurations for different applications. On the right, you have different sections for different controls on the dial. And on the left, you have a little image that shows you the hardware control you're configuring. So as I move through the sections, the image changes to match. At the top of the page, you have a drop down for selecting the dial variant. And right below that is a section that allows you to select or create new configurations. So under app name, you can see a list of all the configurations I have already created and I can load anyone by simply selecting it. So I can make changes to it if I need to. Next to that, you have a text box for entering the name of a new configuration. And next to that is the index that is automatically assigned to each configuration. Now, because of the significance of the index and how much power it has over the entire system, I programmed it to be assigned and completely managed automatically. So as you can see, it's not editable in the app. The only way to modify it is by locating the actual configuration file and changing it there. Next to the ID is the app LED. This allows you to assign different colors to your configurations. You can choose any color from the drop down and also assign different animations. There is a lot you can do on this page. Lots of configurations and command combinations that you can use. And I won't be able to go through all of them in this video. What I'll do is demonstrate how you go about creating a configuration for an application. And I'll use that to explain what all these controls do. For this example, I'll be using the absolute variant of the dial since it has all the hardware controls. So the first thing to do is to select the dial variant from the drop down and that will open up the appropriate page for configuring the dial. Different dial variants will have different contents on their pages. The next step is to name the configuration. For this example, I'll create a configuration for notepad so the name of the configuration should also be notepad. you notice that a new index will be assigned automatically as soon as I start typing the name. The name should not contain special characters and it should match the name of the application you want to create a configuration for. Next, I'll assign a color to the configuration. I'll go with something vivid like red. You can also assign animations if you want, but I'll just leave it at red for this example. Once that's done, you can proceed to creating commands for all the hardware controls on the dial. So there are two main types of commands that you can program the dial with. The first is standard HID commands. These are your normal keyboard and mouse commands. This type of command goes directly from the dial to the computer. So that's what these three combo boxes are there for. Each box contains a list of special keys that you can choose from including mouse inputs. Each box is also editable, so you can enter the specific keys you want. For example, if I do Shift-Alt-J, 
the dial will send the keystrokes directly to the PC in the same order, just like you would from the keyboard. These type of commands are stored directly on the dial itself, so they can be used on any operating system, even without the companion app. The second type of commands are software enabled commands. These are stored on the computer and are executed by the app. The way this works is, the specific dial control programmed to the command is given a specific coded message. So when the dial detects an input from the appropriate hardware control, it sends that coded message through serial to the app. The app then decodes the message and carries out the required operation on the computer. So if you take a look at the command section on the configuration page, you notice the little use HAP checkbox in front of every control on the page. So if you check this box, it removes the HID command boxes and shows you the in-app configurations you can use. The first option you have is the inbuilt functions. These are the functions built into the HAP itself. So if you take a look at this dropdown, you see a list of these functions. Right now, I only have media controls programmed into the app, but I will be adding more features and application specific functions in the future. The second option is file or script. With this, you can use the DAO's controls to quickly launch a specific app, open a file or run a script. So if you select this option, you simply locate and select the file so its location is put into the box. All the configurable controls on the dial can use any of the two types of commands I just described, but there are other specific types that are unique to some of the dial's controls. One of such commands is the dual command checkbox. If you take a look at the capacitive touch section, you'll notice that under single tap and double tap, you have the dual shortcut option. This allows you to use a single control from the dial to perform two operations that are boolean in nature. Take a door for example, there are only two possible ways to interact with it. You can either close it if it's already open, or you can open it if it's already closed, making it a boolean type operation. Another example is the cut and select command in Adobe Premiere Pro. Commands like this don't require two separate inputs. So that's what this checkbox does. It allows you to assign two commands to one input. This function is only enabled for the capacitive touch tap inputs and also the tap inputs on the macro keys. Another command type that's unique to the macro keys is the ability to print out strings. For each macro key, you'll notice that there's an additional text box in front of each macro input. This allows you to print out predefined text with a key tap or a key hold on the macro keys. I'll demonstrate this later on in the video. Another section of the DAO's configuration that has unique options is the Space Navigator. Here I can either configure the Space Nav manually or I can set it to any of the predefined options. These options will connect the DAO Space Navigator directly to the specific application's API. I am currently working on SOLIDWORKS API. Other applications will also be supported in the future. But for now, only the SOLIDWORKS option works. And I will be showing that in a future video, where I'll be describing the DAO Space Navigator feature in more details. For now though, I'll just set it to function as the mouse. So that's a general overview of the basic things you can do on this configuration page. I have gone ahead and selected some options for the notepad configuration we started with. So now I just need to click on the create or save configuration button. What happens when I click the button is it takes all the configuration selections I've made and then writes the actual code into a new configuration file. So if I now go back to the list of configurations available, you can see the new notepad configuration we just created. To update the dial with this configuration, you need to reprogram it. For that, you can simply click on the reprogram dial button and that will open up the appropriate Arduino sketch.
as you can see the new notepad configuration is listed as one of the tabs now all that's left to do is to click on the upload button Once the upload is complete, you can close Arduino. The hub should automatically reconnect with the dial. So now when I open up Notepad, you notice the dial's LED change to red, which is what I set it to in the configuration. I also set the knob to volume control. So when I rotate it, the volume on my system changes. I have also set the first macro key to print out this is a notepad configuration. So when I tap on it, you can see the text is printed into notepad. If I switch to another text editor like Word for example, nothing happens when I tap on the key. And that's because notepad is no longer the active application and the dial has switched to the default configuration as is indicated by the LED. If I go back to Notepad, the dial switches back to the Notepad configuration and the key does what's expected again. The space nav which I set to control the mouse also works as expected. You can see the mouse pointer move as I tilt the dial in different directions. So that's the gist of it guys. This video is only a generalized introduction to the dial software. I'll be making subsequent in-depth videos for all the control types on the dial and the nuances associated with them. I'll have the code for the Hamsville Dial app on my GitHub repository, which I'll link to in the description. You can download, modify and compile it yourself, or you can just download the release installer file and simply install it on your computer. This is a WPF.NET framework application, so it only works on Windows PC. I'll also have links to all the Arduino libraries that controls the hardware on the Hamsville Dial. If you've made it this far into the video, first I want to say thank you for watching. And if you'd like to see more on this topic, or if you're generally into DIY contents like this, consider subscribing to the channel. Until the next video, bye.